in the center of a valley that should not be stands a thing that cannot be. Those who go before the monolith do not return the same as they left. Sometimes they do not return at all. So, this, in my campaign, was the second favorite module that we run. It's very popular. It's very spooky. Um, basically, there's a monolith in a valley. And the size of the valley is randomly turned. I wish this picture were in color. But yeah, the size of the valley is randomly determined. So I rolled, and every time you go, it's different. So I rolled up some random results for the size of the valley. Can't get these one handed though. So, yeah, the first time you find the valley, it's 240 astronomical units across, which means the depth of the valley is greater than the distance from the Earth to the Sun by many factors. And the, and the second time, it's 13 miles across. The next time, it's 582 feet. So, that's. And there's a bunch of magical effects that could happen in the valley, like magical sentience, where any magic you cast turns into a monster, which may or may not be hostile toward you, or life slows down, or you might get a mutation. Time moves backwards, time moves forward faster weather out of time, you know, lots of interesting things. And there's some locations within the valley as you're going down into it. One of them is the mist. The mist teleports you further into or out of the valley. And that's why it's possible to reach the monolith in a valley that's 240 astronomical units across. Because the mist teleports you closer. Here's one of the monsters you might encounter on your way to or from the valley. And then you get to the monolith. Now, the monolith is a really interesting maze that looks like a, a tunnel going forward to infinity. But if you turn to the right, you see another tunnel going forward to infinity. It's really bizarre and it has guardians. It's got a whole world inside the model. It's a, and it's affected by the thoughts of your players about what is it they want. And they made a one of these posters that explains that tells a story of one party's trip through the monolith and all the things that happened in the monolith. And this is why it was so interesting to my players when I ran it. But these were old school players. When I tried to run it with new school players, I didn't see any of this because it, it was responding to what they wanted and everything they wanted was something outside the monolith. They didn't want treasure, they didn't want a place to sleep. They just wanted to get out. Yeah, let's see. These pictures show some of the interesting things that are in here. I don't want, there's a healing room. If you want healing, there's these little pods. You get into them, and they heal you. It takes a certain amount of time. You don't know how long it's going to be before the healing is complete. It could be that it happens instantly. It could take a few rounds. It could take years. It could take forever. And if you wake somebody up before the healing's done, here's a list of things that could happen to you while you were supposed to be healing. Like you come out of it naked or your gender changes or you now have the ability to fly. 
Yeah, so it could be advantageous or it could be disadvantageous to do that. Yeah, if you're looking for the armory, there's an armory with weapons. But the biggest treasure is the head of Carter Holmes. It's a magic user who's been alive for billions of years, stuck in a jar. And if you eat his brain before he dies, you can gain his powers. So it's about 10 bites of brain possible. It depends. But yeah, and some of his powers are some unique magical spells like Lost and Pass Door, Time Insertion, Agelessness. So he has some unique powers. Anyway, that is the monolith beyond time and space. Which, as I said, was the second favorite after Deep Carbon Observatory module in my Roll20 campaign. But when I tried to play it in person with new school players, they didn't want to sleep, they didn't want treasure, they didn't want healing. All they wanted were things that were outside the monolith, so I kept showing them the door. So they didn't like it so well. 